Okay, there we are, October the 16th. Anyways, our wrap up for this two week period. Uh, the pool has been functioning uh, for most of this period. Um, and from the readout on the pump, uh, which is running 24 hours a day, uh, so it's doing at lowest speeds for 23 hours a day and one hour a day at uh, its highest speed of 3450 RPM. So the electronic pump is telling me it's uh, using 2,700 2, watts at full speed and 30 watts at the lowest speed of 600 RPM. Uh, according to Hayward stats, this is moving uh, 2.4 times. This pool rotates filters 2.4 times a day. And the power bill that will get associated at those consumption rates is it will run at the low speed for a month for $5 of power. And the one hour of full speed will cost $22 per hour. So the total power bill on that is $27 a month. The pump will actually last longer running constantly than if it was cutting in and out. But the point is it's filtering the water over double what the average pool is and also when it's filtering at low speeds like that it actually filters better than if it's running at high speed. You know it has more time to filter so it's filtering better and filtering 2.4 times changeover per day. So anyways that's uh, the end result there and it's no small also this is when the resistance comes into play you'll see here at the end here you can see the, the tube for the jets coming around here to feed the last jet this is one bank on this side and there's another bank on the other side and there's three pumping up from the floor um, for a total of 11 jets so the thing is uh, this pool has excellent circulation and also very low resistance with no elbows, no T's. You can see here, instead of I made a 90 degree turn, I used a, a curve sweep there, and then another curve to come around to make the 90 degree turn to go back into that jet. So therefore, very low resistance. So that has everything to do with how many watts it's taken to do, get those revolutions in now, the, it's taken a considerable change in appearance over this uh, stretch. We got, well, two of the largest walls of stucco are applied. The windows are almost done. They'll actually finish off tomorrow. They've got all of the gas, the, the rake head windows. Um, they have to bring out the glass. Uh, to fit those in. This is the upgraded aluminum uh, window. I'm not usually terribly fond of aluminum but it does have its advantages here. This the regular aluminum is just absolute crap and it doesn't work. Uh, quits working very quickly. But anyways, this is the one type that has a triple track so that there's a third track for those big honking screens to run in that you see sitting here. I've used the UPVC windows, but unfortunately those screens with UPVC are just like spaghetti. But these are reasonably rigid, so they will function uh, good, and those have rollers. So when they're installed, those will function fine. Um, anyways, they're sealed a lot better and more rigid than the base run of the mill. These are fixed window frames. So again, the uh, tomorrow they're bringing the glass to install in there. So now we've 
We finally got all of our white sealing done. It's been a bit of a battle uh, dealing with expansion and contraction as we found out. But anyways, it's done. This has got uh, one coat of paint on most of it. And okay, so we've got a good chunk of our tile down. Now one of the things that we, I set this up so that when you come to these doors, the door is flush with the floor inside so there's nothing to trip over. There's going to be a slight drop down to the deck simply because the deck floor is thinner than this one, but that will put a, a molding in to make, it, make up for that. Um, anyways, that's, uh, uh, we just, well, we started this the last go around, so now we'll just continue along with our tiling. Um, here enough, well, we got all the tiling out to all the doors, so that was the big thing was to be able to establish the levels as being 